What's up? It's your girl Kia, and you are caught in the car with Kia. I've not done a video in a while, just haven't been inspired by anything, um, because I don't live and die by YouTube numbers. I know a lot of YouTubers do, and it's like their second job. It is not for me. Um, so I literally do YouTube for fun. So everybody who has been dropping down in my comments saying that I need to get off YouTube or whatever, and the person who actually found me on Facebook and left me a nasty message through Messenger, like, come on now. Like, you guys need to... I appreciate those who watch my videos, even those who do leave comments, even if they're good or bad. But you going to my Facebook page to make a nasty comment, fix this camera, nasty com uh, nasty message seems like a lot of wasted energy. But I digress. So what I want to talk about while I'm in the car heading to lunch was uh, the death of Candy Veracity on the TV show Pose. Um, I'm an avid Pose watcher. Pose is a show on FX that chronicles the uh, ballroom, the drag and gay ballroom scene in New York from probably 1985 till now, I think they're in 1991. Um, the movie heavily reflects the documentary Paris is Burning. Paris is Burning came out in the mid 90s, early 90s I think, I don't know, but it's definitely, it's heavily, a lot of those storylines are pulled from there. One of the storylines that was pulled from the documentary, was used in the show, was the death of the documentary, her name was Venus Extravaganza, but on the show was the death of Candy Veracity. So this started all this conversation about how, about colorism basically, and how black actresses are, and the black trans actors on the show are portrayed, and how Candy was killed. So Ryan Murphy is in something amazing because this is a very, very diverse cast of gay and straight and transgender characters on the show of all different races um, and, you know, mostly being brown people. And it's a beautiful thing. Uh, Electra Abundance. Is it Abundance now or did she do a new name? I don't know. But Electra is a dark-skinned trans woman and so is Candy Veracity. And they are, I don't want to call them aggressive, but they're very, very assertive. Almost to the point of it being, like, jarring about how assertive they are. But they have to be. And a lot of people don't like how this is portrayed, but people, let's be real, a lot of black women are like that, and we don't, and sometimes we don't have a choice but to be because we're trying to fight off stereotypes on a regular basis. And when we're not trying to fight off stereotypes, we're trying to fight off each other for some apparent reason. So you have to develop a very, very tough skin, and if you're not gonna believe in you and be down for you and not let anybody say anything about you, then you're basically meat for the wolves. And I think that's what they're trying to portray that Electro is trying to be this overly confident, you can't tell me anything, I'm better than you person, so that no one can belittle her. And we kind of saw that when she had the affair with Chris Maloney's character, who I can't remember his name in the, in the show, but it might have been Jim or Jack or something. He basically threw her out and treated her like she was nothing because she wanted to feel good about herself. So she goes right back to the, I need to be defensive. I need to protect me and do for me because no one else is going to. Um, with Candy's character, she is put down at every point. From season one to now, she is constantly being put down. She constantly shows that she has low self-esteem from the butt injection, injections episode um, in season one and how that made her really, really sick. She has said that she you know, isn't as beautiful, isn't as passing as everybody and just wants to be seen and can never just get a break. Um, she's had some embarrassing moments in the dance scene. She's been, she's had a couple of fights and everything. And I think that's because she's had to. She didn't have a choice. And, and back in those days, I feel like girls, especially girls who were working the beat and working the block, you know, you have to always be protective, especially, you know, keeping weapons in your purses and hammers and all that kind of stuff. And I believe they're portrayed correctly. Black women may not like it and black people may not like it, but this is our lot in life. And I can give you an example. I married an Indian man. Well, he's Guyanese, but his family is origin is India. And those people have horrible stereotypes about African-American women. When I first got with my husband, for some reason, they thought I was a dancer, which I think what happened, I'm assuming what happened was, is that I was working from home. I've worked from home for years. I wasn't leaving to work from home, and then my husband mentioned I was a dancer. I'm a ballroom Latin dancer, like salsa and bachata and cha-cha. But they heard dancing and just assumed stripper. And it's just like, okay, couldn't I have been a ballerina maybe? No, okay, that's fine. Um, then it started to go around that I was bossing my husband around. Like, it was just a stereotype after stereotype. Then his friends got drunk one day and told me that they heard that all black women smell. Like down there smell. And that kind of sent me over the edge and to kind of 
of being that angry black woman of what are y'all talking about? Y'all sound dumb. Like, do you know how y'all smell on a hot day? Like, get out of my face with that mess. So it was, it, it's that. We get these types of stereotypes and we have to defend ourselves constantly. So the next thing is Candy being killed off the show and how they killed off a black character. They didn't have it. They only had two choices and people to kill off for this story to actually be effective. They could have killed off Angel and they could have killed off Candy. Those are the only two people where it could have happened to where the story would have made more sense. Um, and then when you deep dive between the two people, it could have only been Candy. Because Candy had wanted to be seen so bad. She was loved by people, but it was in a love that was not openly like I love you I love you it's more just like a oh I love that crazy bitch she know that and she didn't know that it's not like what they do for Angel everybody babies Angel everybody loves Angel everybody wants to be Angel it's not wasn't like that for Candy so it wasn't a colorism situation with there it was that Candy's the only character where people would have given a, a crap and but wasn't a main character wasn't a main cast member it could have been Electra I don't think anybody would have given a damn if Electra would have gotten killed. No one would have cared. They would have been like, oh, well, Electra got what she deserved. Couldn't have been Lulu because Lulu's character isn't that big of a deal on the show. It couldn't have been, um, what is the girl's name? I think her name is, I can't think of the other, I think her name might be Venus. Um, the other very beautiful, very beautiful trans girl. Couldn't have been her, wouldn't have cared. And of course it couldn't have been a main cast member. So it had to be Candy. And when you think about everything she's been through with each character, those stories of her walking from person to person were compelling, they were passionate, and we wouldn't have gotten that same vibe from anybody else, not Angel. Also, it ties into the lip sync thing of Candy wanting to do that and getting this amazing final go out scene. So, you know, I think it just, it had to be her. And it sucks, but Ryan Murphy is a good um, showrunner and a good creator because he didn't say Candy okay well you're fired you're, you're never gonna work with me ever again she is now going to be on American Horror Story 1984 which is a big deal I will tell you one thing once you get into the Ryan Murphy universe you're there for life he will put you in different shows you can bounce from here to here I wouldn't be surprised if we saw her on um, what is that show called Fosse Van Dome or um, American Crime Story, or what is he? There's another show he has an FX. Oh, um, American Feud. I think it's called Feud or Rivalry. It's the one he did with Betty Davis and um, somebody else. I, mean, I can't remember all the names right now, but he, Candy Veracity, whose real name, the actress' name is Angelica Ross. She's an amazing actress. She's good at what she does. She's fine. He didn't just kill her off the show and then to say, okay, well, now it's another black girl looking for a job. He is now putting her into another really, really amazing project that I think she's gonna do really, really well in. So, you know, the colorism thing, is just, it's, it's really weird for me because there's real instances of colorism, but I don't feel the Ryan Murphy universe, one second people have to get over, oh, tourist drivers are the worst. Um, I don't believe this is an instance of, of colorism. I don't, I believe that Candy's death was needed in the story so that people understood that this this does happen and it's tragic and that you know it is it's, it's a tragic thing and that they these that her story was was important and I'm glad that she's got another job you know so that's my two spiel drop down in the comments section like and subscribe to my channel don't seem to send me nasty messages on my Facebook page find me on Instagram and I am Kia Giovanni and I will see you guys in the